Hello, welcome to Frame by Frame. Twelve people. Um, I'm Andy. Thirteen people. Thirteen. Yes. Awesome. We, lucky now. We we had a growth spurt <laughs> in, our, in our rankings. Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, it's still turning up for shows. Doesn't feel like a week since the last time we did a podcast. No, it feels like about half an hour, but strange. Yeah, it's as if we just ate pizza and went straight to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we wouldn't do that. No. No, 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 we're professionals. Yeah. We, we're not we'd like. We'd be disingenuous, would we? We're not Countdown. No. We don't film three in a day. Yeah, no. Bloody. That one with Noel Edmonds. Deal or no deal. Yeah, yeah, just because he changes his underwear. Yeah. Probably it's a new show. How do you know he changes his underwear? <laughs> You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, then who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? No funny how. I mean, funny like don't clown you. I'm Peter Vinkman. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man that doesn't spend time in the stand can never be a real man. I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So what are we talked about today? Underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're, no, we're, we're going to talk about um, a few films. Yes. That uh, have a similar theme. In that they have a female protagonist. Mm -hmm. Who have uh, big body changes. Yes. Big changes in their body inside and out and uh, yeah right okay horror films pretty much yeah i yeah. say horror films uh but not mainstream not mainstream no. independent, independent low budget yes re fairly low budget um fairly unknown people yep so the films are starry yep. eyes and honeymoon starry eyes and honeymoon maybe talk a little bit about teeth, teeth. just well, a little bit because just it's just to gonna... say how it's done incredibly well Fairly well, and not as on a, and well. and pretty much on the on the nose. Yeah, yeah, too much on the nose. It's like the good, the bad, good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Well, in my terms, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, I think we've got different uh, feelings about these films, but um, so should we start with honeymoon? Okay. So this is the famous family cottage. Do you like it? Here's what I see: the woods, a lake, no one around. Are you okay? Yeah. Couldn't find you. I was sleepwalking. I'm fine. How's my little zombie face this morning? I made a coffee. You feel distant, different. Did something happen in the woods? I come with something okay. Right, so Honeymoon is about a couple that go on honeymoon. <laughs> Cue drinking water. <laughs> um, Who are these people, Andy? The, the, they're a, a very young, attractive couple. They go to the woman's house, or uh, how she grew up in for the honeymoon, don't they? Yeah, owned by her relatives. Yeah, and, uh, it's, it's all very nice and fishy. Uh, yeah, big lake. Big lake. A lot of fishing paraphernalia inside, yeah. and uh, very old-fashioned, quirky kind of cabin in the woods kind of thing. Yeah, well, Stephen's getting fed up of no, 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 no. Let's, yes, not, let's not go there yet. Let's not go there yet. Let's let's live the dream and enjoy the movie. Enjoy what we know about the movie and what right. we like about this film. Well, I think Stephen thinks I really love this film. Yeah, which was not the case. Ah, what I liked about it is to try to do something different with alien abduction. No one gets abducted, but that kind of vibe. Yeah, it was low budget enough that low they budget. just it was a it was basically a flashlight through the window. Yeah, but the first night they're there. Yeah, they, they, they've had the sex because they're newly married, and that's what you do. And um, which is a po far in all horror, horror films. If yeah, you have sex, you you, you, you die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wes Craven talked about that at great length in the screen, didn't he? But what I actually liked about it, and just about that one shot, is when they're just in bed and then a light shines on them. And then it goes off, and I was like, "Oh, hang on, something, some, something different's going to happen here." And it was. Have you seen that before? This this film. Um. Okay, I mean, there there are things that I haven't seen moment wise. Mm. Um, 
for example, the, the self-harm, trying to get a worm out, is, is been done to death. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't know, I kind of felt it was limited, that they were li very limited with what they could do. By budget? By, lo by budget and location choices and mm -hmm. the, the fact that they've written themselves into a, into a, um, a place where they just couldn't go anywhere. I mean, I would have been, I mean, you know, when they're looking for their phone, I would have been looking for my phone a little bit sooner. You know, when they were looking for the keys to the car? Yeah. I would have been looking for the key for my car a lot sooner. Yeah. A lot sooner. I, I kind of don't get their sense of reality about the situation until it's too late. And I know it's a low, low budget film and um, it's, it's got a good grip on, on the imagery, vision. Mm -hmm. Um, the characters, like I say, that what the actors did with their characters was extraordinary, considering they're both British. Yeah. Oh, really? They're both English. Wow. Yes. I didn't know that. Um, so, kudos to them. I mean, they they were able to. It's very hard to be a very small cast. Mm. I mean, I. Because uh, it really is just them two. I know you have yeah. the, the 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 sort of ex boyfriend and yeah. his wife dying thing come into it, but kind of feel as though that uh, maybe the script let them down a little bit. The ability to to do anything with their situation, to actually do anything of it, because the script literally just kept them in one place and didn't really, there was nothing that they could really do other than let them let the guy drown at the end. Um, you know, it just seemed a bit disappointing because I just, I just kind of wanted something a little bit more stylistically, artistically different. See, something to bounce out. See, I've just got a, a huge amount of respect for anybody in today's cinema world who can just write a script yeah to get it made and it's been put out exactly and and I, I hear what you're saying Stephen quit complaining and uh, well this and is the essence of what we've with, tried to yeah, do yeah I you know. know and yeah. um, that's why and it's had a, it's had a cinema release yeah, I mean, it's Where incredible. The starry Eyes won't have a cinema release in this. No, no, because of the nature of it, I think they're just... Yeah. yeah but, but part of me just kind of felt... I'm amazed by Starry Eyes. Yeah. I am amazed at what they did with that film. Mm. I just kind of thought that that Honeymoon could have, well, could have gone a little bit further. It's, it's again, it's your um, Star Trek Into Darkness thing. It's all surface. Yeah. Which I think you struggle with a bit. I struggle with just watching a film and letting it just be what it is. Yeah. Um, but if so, I, I enjoy both. Yeah. You know what I mean. Obviously, we'll get onto it. But Starry Eyes is a far better film. Sure. But I enjoyed it because I thought it played out well. I thought the sort of desperation in him was there. Mm hmm. I enjoyed the paranoia because there's one point I should explain. There's a point in it where. Um, they go to a cafe and um, it looks closed then all of a sudden you see this guy comes out and it, mm -hmm. you, you can tell it's someone from the woman's past and he's a little bit with his wife he's very sort of down on her isn't he so like get away yeah yeah yeah. and then that night they do the thing they go to sleep he wakes up and she's disappeared he can't find her and she's gone into the woods when he goes into sure. the woods she always looks like she's been scratched and he assumes that this bloke has raped her yeah, and then yeah. it starts a big paranoia with him, which yeah. I think has played out quite well. It is, and then, yeah, I, I've... I spent half the time thinking, yeah, it's going all right, and half the time thinking, how can a man be that thin? <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Do so, that or you will. But that's that's not that's not surface. I mean, that's that's you yeah, doing what I do is is kind of try and find something and, and and gravitate towards it and think, well, why why is that like that? Mm. But I I don't know. I I just I just didn't feel. I mean, with like I say, with Starry Eyes, I was totally invested. Yeah. yeah. I, I they they could have just been throwing spaghetti at each other and I would have believed it. Mm. Uh, I don't know, they did actually throw food at each other at one moment in the restaurant so, um, when she oh, was yeah. a spat with the manager but you know if, if there was like a stupid food but uh, I don't know I just I just didn't feel that I was in the movie enough with Honeymoon that mm. I was actually on the I was above the surface and I just didn't want to um, engage with it as much maybe I was just too resistant to engage with it and let well, the things happen exactly I, I again I enjoyed the elements of something else that we never really get to see do we but there's yeah. so, there's something that's inf infecting them 
and you sort of think it's this otherworldly presence. Yeah. Yeah. I, I and I get that there is another worldly presence, but the the worldly the on. Un- I like that it's overseeing it, but we never yeah. see it. We're we're, we're kind of like overseeing it. We're yeah. kind of like on that outside looking in. Mm. Um, but I, I just kind of felt that their the the characters' relationship with each other was extremely overcranked. It was as if it was as if there was a fear that the film could be boring. Yeah. Um, so that they they filled it to the max with 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 the quirkiness, mm. which uh, I guess. I guess it's possible, but I I kind of felt as though it was it was purely a device to kind of make a, a drastic contrast between that and the actual breakdown of their relationship. Right. But you know, I, I'm I'm sitting there. I have to look at the film in a critical way and think. Well, I know I would do things differently. Seriously, would have done things differently. Yeah. I wouldn't have been in the cabin in the woods, for example. See, I would. I like a cabin in the woods. Yeah, they're, they're okay, but they, but they would. There was no way. I mean, if you actually watch the film Cabin in the Woods, they took it to a completely different level. We need to do one of them on that. Yeah, film. I think it's so. Such a good film. But um, I just got to say that there is. Uh, I've got a list of all the other films that that uh, that spring to mind. Well, that were set in, the wood in a cabin in the woods, and uh, would you like me to read the list? Yeah, please. Okay, and not in any order of rank of goodness or badness. Um, Actually, after you said the list, I want you to tell me which film out of that list you like the most. Okay, right after the, after the list. After the list. Okay. So we've got Wrong Turn, Friday the Thirteenth, The Evil Dead, A Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Blair Witch Project, Cabin Fever, The Evil Dead Two. Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, Misery, The Cabin in the Woods, Wolf Creek, I Spit on Your Grave, Sleepaway Camp, Severance, Mama, The Antichrist, The Burning, Dead End, Pumpkinhead, Motel Hell, The Woods, Hatchet, Secret Window, Dead Snow, The Guardian, The Old Dark House, The Cottage, Storm Warning, Shaitan, Small Town Folk, Frightmare, Monster Man, Spider Baby, Hell's Ground, Don't Go Into the Woods, Lake Dead, The Woods Have Eyes, which is nothing to do with The Hill of Eyes, but right. you know. Uh, Blood Ranch, Yellow Brick Road. Not to be confused with The Hills Have Wood. The Broken. <laughs> the, they could have wood. And, yeah, and The Broken, which looks quite interesting, actually. It's one that I'm looking at. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's a list of, of 40 Okay. And, and when's the cabin in the woods in the Blair Witch Project? Don't know. man stress protect deodorant. Proven protection. Sorry. Even in stressful situations. Ah! <laughs> We've been invaded by a commercial. <laughs> Works against stress sweating. <laughs> stress sweating. <laughs> stress sweating. I'm stress sweating right now. I know. Give me some of that stuff. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um. Well, yeah. They were in the list. Blair Witch Project. Yeah, but there's um, not a cabin in the woods. There's a house in the woods. There's not a cabin. Ca- a cabin in the woods was there. I, I no, no. It. In Blair Witch Project, there's no cabin in the woods. There is a house in the but woods. But it's it's, no a, it's more about the theme of it. Uh, it's, the, uh, it's still it's still a place in the middle of the woods that you could go into. <laughs> it's not really a catchy film, is, that, is it? <laughs> the place in the middle of the woods that you can go into. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> That place in the middle of the woods they can go into three. <laughs> they went in again. <laughs> but did they come out alive? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's, it's more about the construct. <laughs> it's about the design. And I just like saying that I mean, there, there are so many films that are a, a cabin in the woods that I just kind of I kind of felt a little bit disappointed that it was another another cabin in the woods and I kind of wanted to see something new and I didn't I didn't get that experience what would you have liked to have seen then um a cabin in the city I would have liked to have actually seen, this is my idea and I've got uh this this is my idea uh it was I just kind of feel as though it was crying for something new why not a different location how about um a flight that takes them to an airport that has they have to go down uh, as a small airport in Japan or or somewhere 
where nobody speaks a language or the Ukraine or Mongolia right and they because somebody's sick on the plane okay so they they get off and they they get put up into a hotel that's that they get driven by a taxi to a ho small hotel mm -hmm. and instead of the woods the actual community who li who live there are just um, foreigners who don't speak their language that just don't want to engage they just look at them in a very strange way and yeah there's dr the same drama could happen the same drama can take place there and yet nobody would want to touch them leave, just leave them just let them get on with it because you know it's very un I, I was it's kind of like making it a little bit a little bit different mm. setting I just think setting could be it could have been a lot more interesting yeah you know um, no, I, giving I, a, no, bit, a bit okay, of depth yeah. a bit of depth about the honeymoon situation I mean yeah They've they've got a honeymoon and they get a cabin in the woods and that actually happens. Mm. They actually they get what they want to go for. Why not give them something that they didn't expect to begin with? Yeah, okay, I like it. But budget, yes, they, they clearly have a lot of money. I, you can see how yes. people want to do this because it's so easy to do it. You know, that's it. We'll rent yeah. a cabin in the woods. We've got we're in the middle of a woods, so we're not going to get yeah. outside. You know, and they're not really in the middle of the woods. They're in a town. There just doesn't seem to be anyone in the could, town. Could they have actually just bought uh, an old uh, abandoned cinema or an old abandoned church or something that is that they could have just moved into and it's isolated and they're actually going to be doing it up? Something that's a little bit different. Yeah. Doing something with Again, a place. Again, no, I think it's just it, it's easy, isn't it? It's easy. It's easy access. We've just got married, and even the, the wedding video was them saying that like. The family didn't want them to get married. Screw you. We got married anyway, and now we're yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which is okay. It is. It's just a, yeah. I get what you're saying because it's just uh, it's yeah. It's easy writing. It's easy. It's, it's an easy film, done, but it's, it's not a film that that I'm going to remember or want to go back to. Oh no, it's, no, 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 it's, no, no. It's it's okay, and I'm glad that I'm glad that they've done it, and the actors really had a good experience of it. I think they they were so they're, they're good friends for, yeah. throughout and, and I think that maybe the, the, the crew and the director it's, it's school fees it's, 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 they made a bit of money from it they moved on I mean it's, it's, it's but to me it's nothing special well the, it is nothing special yeah. but again you know I just I like the idea that these people that we don't know made a film and they've had it released bearing in mind that our short film COCO3 was actually made in a cabin in the back of our garden yeah kind of makes you realise that you know even we've done it I guess that sometimes I like being on familiar ground yeah maybe that's it you know and it was just watch the film couple of drinks it was perfect I didn't have to like switch everything off that's in the, in the room and, f and think right I have to get into this well it was just something that happened and it finished and I thought yeah there we go but I do agree with you at the end I did think yeah. that where um, she basically at the end he's been knocked out. She knocks him out because yeah. I mean it's it's something that I, I think for for a low budget filmmaker I tend to lean to, towards knocking people out in the end of scenes because I don't know where to how to get them to, from one place to another. Yeah. Motivation is always difficult, and usually the simplest solution is whack him over the head. Yeah, and then she put. She puts, I don't mind that because she, uh, she puts him in the lake. She puts like a, a weight round his ankles and throws him overboard and he seems remarkably calm about it <laughs> well he, he, he sounds he, he, he kind of reminds me of Ned Flanders like oh really I, I, you, you want to hide me well this yeah. isn't really the way to do it maybe we ought to th look up look up the word hide um, you know what this, this is actually getting wet and cold around my ankles really I, 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 I really think you should reconsider uh, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to breathe underneath this water. This is not a good idea. Uh, really, uh, okay, it's really getting cold now. And it's almost and as if, like, be careful with that weight. I don't need to scratch yourself. You know. Yes, all oh, careful. Lower me in. Lower me in. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's like uh, he says, you don't want to break a nail now, do you? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I um, feel that maybe the next film that the director does will be more substantial. Mm. I think it shows promise. And like I say, I enjoyed it on just uh, just a just a surface level. Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. So, moving on to a film that has many levels. So starry eyes. Starry eyes. Yeah. Now this was a very stylistic film. Very David Lynch. It was, but also it had that um, uh, t touch of the eighties. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it did. Yeah, and I yet. 
and yet it didn't go too far with that style and it still filmed that but it kind of kept it in the background this kind of nuance of mm. 80s horror and shock horror yeah. you know chillers it was yeah the video nasty type thing video nasties feeling yeah, yeah I mean the, even the, the the first titles were the actual, in, yeah the actual filter yeah of the yeah the camera yeah like the the muted tones of blue in LA I mean it's never felt so cold I mean LA mm. is a warm place you yeah. know everybody thinks about the heat and the humidity and and yet here it could it, it looked like Manchester <laughs> it looked really really cold um, which is a kind of it was a mood it was a mood palette Mm. the mood palette that it was you know it's not a warm place it's not an inviting place these people are in LA but they're not you don't get to see the sunshine until you're actually making it in LA that's yeah. what I think they're saying yeah yeah well, no, absolutely yeah. Mm. welcome to Big Taters my name is Sarah can I start you guys off with an order of our freedom tots We got all these people, all our friends. They're just sitting around trying to figure out what to do, trying to figure out how to make something. I thought you were avoiding me. Why would you think that? Because I stole your role. Come on, you lady. I work so hard. Every week it's a new class, a new audition. Hopefully you'll see something in me. I know I'd be great for this. We'll be in touch. me i'm your girl i will do whatever it takes for this role i think time and time again we're seeing this motif of what's on the surface and what actually happens yeah she she does that i mean there's that dream sequence <clears throat> that i think was incredible because uh, the story is about a, a girl who uh, wants fame and fortune she yeah. has um, a wall of of celebrity old style yeah, old school celebrity, and she's very much about, uh, very conscious about her body image. She wants to be a star. Mm -hmm. She wants to make it big in Hollywood, and uh, she's she's getting to a point now where she's 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 reaching desperation, I should say, and I, that she's starting to panic about about auditions beforehand. And yeah, yeah. I love the um, the scene where she's reading for them yes and then all of a sudden the letters start this disappearing and they get mixed up and then all, all of a sudden it's just highlighted to, highlights and yeah. text oh. which I, you feel for it because you're there you think I can't read it either yeah. I can't either I can't yeah. I can't do anything for you and that is a skilled director right there who is able to put you into the film and make you feel as though you just want to get the script and yeah. just help her read it because you feel as though and you realise it's a dream sequence because you know the you know, spoiler alert! You know, yeah. blood starts to pour, and um, go. yeah, it goes to the the extreme. Yeah, which is you know, I mean, that, that's kind of how <clears throat> our dream sequences would be for uh, for our film that we've we've developed. We like that kind of idea yeah. of just <clears throat> building on the motif of visual imagery as a point from a point of view from yeah. a perspective of the protagonist. So basically, she um, or the antihero applies was. for an audition, doesn't she? That she, she does. Online. Yeah, yeah, and um, she tells her friends about it some friends are happy other friends there's the, the whole typical jealousy business yeah. up, one upmanship between a friend yeah and, uh, where, where you kind of don't want them to succeed and you kind of do passive aggressive things to make them feel bad about themselves yeah 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 that one um, character in that is particularly yeah nasty. I, I really hope that your sitcom fails because you know yeah I I'm, so, I'm sorry oh, I'm sorry about that the, that that commercial and she's like what 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 commercial? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the commercial you went for I got that yeah yeah. And she's like oh did you I didn't know you but don't worry they were, they were nasty people anyway. yeah, but, yeah, yeah but don't worry your thing's coming now you know yeah yeah that's it <clears throat> exactly and um, but you know you, you do feel straight away I mean it, it it doesn't take long for you to actually take her side and you mm. are actually gunning for her when before that audition she's seeing everybody who's feeling sick waiting for the audition and then the woman comes out crying and she can you, you see the look on her face and you just see the fear like 
oh god, you know, I know how I would be feeling right now. This is an interview. This is an audition. This is big. Yeah. This is this is this is. It, you could felt you felt <clears throat> your, your own chest tightening. And when when her name was called, I actually went, I'm here. I'm here. Let's go. <laughs> you just kind of feel as though you're right there with her. And, and yeah, the, the actress who played her, she she. Um, she, she's done a few things before. She's uh, she's not that well known. No, um, I'm not going to tell her her name right now because I can't remember. But uh, she reminds me so much of Madeline Stowe. Yeah, there's a Mad- that, that Twelve Monkeys Madeline Stowe feeling about her. You know that uh, two two Jakes. Um, she you know. reminded me. The performance in this reminds me of Cheryl Fenn's performance in Twin Peaks. Firewall with me. There we go. Yeah, there's that there as well. Mm. And I thought of Mia F- Mia Farrow as well, with the uh, the manic, uh, the the Catherine Denove, um in Repulsion, and a little bit of Brooke Adams' Invasion of the Body Snatchers in the whole nuance of her character. She's kind of, I I kind of when I started to think about the different actresses that she was resembling, it struck me. She is actually a, she is a collage herself as a character. The, the woman in the film is a collage of all these different movie stars. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I didn't realize that I was actually making a collage of, of my own in my own head. And I'm really involved in this movie. Yeah. To a, to a point where, where what she has on her wall, I'm building my own little collage. And mm. I, it's got all these different actresses in it. Freaking weird, man. Yeah, what a performance, though. Oh, well, thank you. I, I, oh, you mean her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your performance yeah. is it's always <laughs> nothing but Oscar worthy. She's got a, she's got a sense of um, she's able to act without actually saying anything. Mm. She's able to just react. Absolutely. You can see in her eyes exactly yeah. what she's thinking. It's in the eyes. You didn't get that nuance. I mean, it's, it is. I mean, I, eyes are so powerful. Yeah. When it comes to film. And for seeing... They're very useful, yeah. The starry eyes. The starry eyes. It's all about the starry eyes. Um, but, she so, watches, but she's very much an observer as well in this film. She mm. watches life around her as it's happening. She seems very disconnected. Yeah. Yeah, she's not definitely not part of the world no. around her. So the actual audition, when she takes the audition, she kind of fluffs it, doesn't she? She does okay, but not very well. I thought she did really well uh, for a standard audition mm. but they want more of course. So but yeah. she, she goes to the bathroom upset because she knows she hasn't really got the part and she has a little bit of a breakdown in there doesn't she? Yes and then it becomes um, well, she's like, masochist. Yeah, uh, she starts ripping her, her hair out which seems to be her release. Yes. This her thing. Yeah and it's very very subtly done. It wasn't really over the top it wasn't like she was pulling hair out she was crunching it. Yeah. And you can feel the follicles just scratching out of her head, and it's just yeah, yeah. yeah. But one of the women that's in the audition, one of the women that's um, t- giving giving the auditions, or taking the auditions, or yeah. being the observer of the audition, who's she, do, who's yeah. with the producer, she basically is in the toilet when she does this. Yeah, and suddenly she's, she's followed like, her there. yeah, and suddenly she's like, "Can you do that again?" <laughs> and they make her go back into the audition, don't they? And actually have a breakdown and, and yank her own, yeah. yeah. Incredible, just thing. to get the the role, you know. Yeah, it's saying so much of what because you, you see the glamour of Hollywood all the time, but you don't see, you know, the uh, casualties yeah, of Hollywood. Exactly. I mean, I mean, to think that these kind of things might actually happen, yeah. I'm pretty sure they are because Hollywood is such um, a hyped up, driven place that people from all across America drive there every single day somebody gets in their car leaves home because they want to make it big in Hollywood mm. and they're either never seen again they either come home broken or they just get lost in the fabrics of, mm. of, and be, be, you know and people take advantage of them there are so many different seedy areas mm. that I, I can see where this is feeding from it's feeding from that area I mean we don't know if this is if this is actually possible and true but I can guarantee if it's if if there's anywhere in the world where it could be possible, where it could yeah, be happening, it'd be Hollywood, it's there. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have the Illuminati on our backs again, aren't we? Oh, I'm sick, just, of, I'm sick of them. Never leave me alone. I know. I know. They always open my mail and take yeah. away my, take away my birthday cards. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing with them. Um, but yeah, there you go. So, uh, <laughs> is it, so, 
There's still lots to talk about this film. No, there is, absolutely. So... <laughs> the restaurant manager. Yeah. And the uh, the restaurant that she works in, she does apply herself to a, a different kind of uh, personality when she's working there. She does. Distracted. Yeah. She's um, got a phone on her all the time when she's not allowed to. That's because the detail in this film is good. Mm. The, 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 the sort of... Um, the things that happen in chain chain restaurants and cinemas and things like that, you don't you watch and you think that wouldn't happen, you're not allowed to have your phone on you because it's not company policy, you're not allowed to do such things in a company policy. They're real. Mm. And yes. to you know, to put them in the film you It know, sounds like somebody somebody in the writing team or at least knows this environment. Yeah, it has worked in like a, a restaurant where all these stupid rules and regulations are in place, which the customers wouldn't care less. No. As long as you're not reading the text in front of a the customer, they wouldn't care less if you just got your phone out and then put it back in your pocket. But they, have, about to, they have to read this whole thing. They do do this whole taters thing, and it's like, yeah. I mean, I've been to Hooters, and um, I went there out of major curiosity. Yeah. And uh, it's a different, it's a different kind of environment. Definitely, you don't feel as though you're going to a restaurant or a food place. You're going to a place where you are um, supposed to pretend that you're not ogling breasts <laughs> and booty. But they play up to that. They make you wanna ogle breasts and stare at booty. Yeah. Even though you kind of maturely in your in your own mind know that it's it's we need to be treating these people. As as people and not but and, and not things that are yeah you know they're not um, see I can't even say it what what are they meat um, objects. objects objects of objects. desire you know yeah. like that, why why did I struggle with that um, but yeah I mean you, you kind of you find yourself fighting that that vibe yeah. but yet they encourage it because your credit card keeps on coming out and you keep on buying more drinks because you're trying to to. Your, your focus is just not on having a meal and having a drink. Yeah. And that's why they do it. They do it to throw you off the whole idea of, of you going out for a meal and getting out. Mm. You just... you just. But, and a lot of it is... Get you've got this, what you're doing. Yeah, a lot of it, you got this incredibly attractive girl serving you. Yeah. Would you would you like sweet? Or you usually think no. You think, yeah, yeah, I will, please. Oh, I'll yeah. Stay we... a bit longer and hog a little bit longer. And it's all about making more money for the... Making, the, business, the business making the experience um, last as long as possible because so you, you don't want it to, you don't want it to stop yeah but you, yeah. the more longer you're there the more money you're going to spend and the more money yeah. for the business it's exploiting people it is and I felt violated when I went to Hooters <sighs> we were working there at the time <laughs> Hi, my name is Jordan from the Hooters of Washington, D.C. Have you ever ordered a plate of our amazing Hooters wings and not known the best way to get all of the meat off the bone? Well, being the Hooters expert that I am, this tip will help you do just that and look like a pro while doing so. Hooters, the wing is our thing. No, I was, I was in Fargo. Didn't do well because of your lack of Hooters. Anyway, um, let's talk about her friends. Okay. Or... Frenemies, uh, as I like to call them. Mm. Yeah. Well, you got the bitchy one. Yeah, the bitchy one who is kind of the queen bitch. Yeah, you got one that actually does genuine, genuinely seem to be a friend. Housemate, wasn't it? Or yeah. a friend. The one who she really sort of turns on, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, exactly. She throws her. Yeah, gives her a good throw. You get pushes, the, her, pushes her. Yeah, you get the sense that the lads want to sleep with her. They all want to sleep with anybody, yeah. and uh, they they don't care about the, um, they they don't pay attention to the uh, squabbles, which is very realistic in a way. Mm. I mean, if, if if you think about it, none of those characters really reacted to her when she was having her fit, which is exactly true to the nature of young lads. That you know, the girls will just be drumming around, and they won't be able to hear anything. They won't be all they can see is just the form moving mm. around and because like and what it means to them if she's upset they don't realize she's upset until she starts walking away yeah because now they're now they now they say oh no no she's upset they couldn't say that when she's in front of her mm. but they say it when she's walking away because they needed to come back to then to to be a part of that construct again of being mm. a female among males yeah it's amazing how how that film just captures that feeling mm. so well 
you know, and they just let her walk off. Nobody goes running after her. Not one of those friends goes running after her when she starts walking off into the darkness alone and then beats up a, a poor homeless man <laughs> for, for not raping her. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, it just, it just throws everything around this film. I love it. It's so good, yeah. I, you know the, the producer when she first goes to his house? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's such a awful, sleazy bastard. Yeah, in corporate America. Yeah, sense. and... Like, um, Basically, he comes on to her, doesn't she? Yeah. Doesn't he? And he puts his hand on her leg, and she's like, not going for it at all. What I kind of liked is she's so desperate for this. Is when a few days has passed, she's ringing back up saying that she wants to see him again. Like she yeah. will go through with it now, just because she wants to roll so badly. Yeah, and it's bizarre because there's she's not given any any other reference for getting out of her situation. Mm. The only situ the the only path that she has is that dead end of her friends. Her friends are literally just a dead end. Yeah. There's nothing for her to kind of reach out towards to go anywhere with. She can only see that one, and it makes you realize how easy it is for some people to go in that direction. Because you always wonder, why do people do it? Why are there girls leaving leaving England right now, heading off to Syria, knowing full well that many of them just end up either coming back or are dead or married off, for you know, as um, as as meat? Well, I mean, but they still do it because the there is situation no is other that, way. Yeah, it's more of a religious thing. They believe, yeah, on a religious level that they're doing the right thing. But this actress believes on a on a on a on her a, own on a, on a deeply religious. Well, she's devoted in the devoted th to the she's devoted in the thought that she will be a star, yeah, and that's that is that she as quits the job. Yeah. She, there's no evidence that she's going to be a star, but she quits the job because she is so. She's she devoted. blames the job for not being totally focused on becoming this fantastic actress she used to believe exactly. she's going to be. Yeah, and yeah, that gets completely exploited, and it's a part of her uh, her visualizing where all her dead end places are, mm. and the only path out is is the yellow brick road to that guy's penis. Yeah. It's odd. It is, and do you, do, it'll, it'll be happening now. In fact, there's a whole genre of porn about whether it's fake or not. I don't. It probably it will be fake, but of women who go for an audition. It's um, casting couch. Thing. Yeah, it's been going on since the yeah, and basically, all right, man. I'll give you the part if you you know have sex with me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but really, it might. It, I mean, it it does happen. It yeah. does happen, and it's very strange. Because... And we know about the mistreatment of women um, in Hollywood now. Well, I mean, yeah. Patricia Arquette brought up the equality, equality of, the... of pay, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Women earn 70% less than male actors do. Exactly. And, uh, the... No, they earn 70% of, yeah. Male actors, male actors tend to be the ones who are making all the decisions and... Uh, and deciding what projects go ahead, and women are, are finding it uh, finding it very hard. And it's just odd because you just don't know. Well, you, you see just on, don't know. on the red carpet when they're all being interviewed, like um, George Clooney come up and what was your motivation for this film? Oh, well, I was doing this, I was doing that, and then um, say Brad Pitt turns up with Angelina on his arm and says, "Oh, oh your film was amazing, your film was amazing," and then Patricia Arquette turns up and goes, "Oh, what are you wearing today?" Who are you wearing? Yeah, who are you wearing? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and it, it's it becomes the whole thing, you know. If if she's with somebody, then it's all about the the the, the you, you basically gush over the projects because they're both together there. You want to not, you don't want to be talking mm -hmm. about what she's wearing, in That's excluding why, Brad. Yeah. You've got to keep them both together. So he's proud of her, and she wants him to hear that she's doing well. Well, that's what I love about Jennifer Lawrence, where yeah. someone asks her, you know, who are you wearing or whatever, they, they asked her, and she's like, this is the top, there's some bottoms. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. And, and she's a single lady in Hollywood. Yeah. Who is, you know, and I think that the, the, the era of the single lady having power in Hollywood is, is it's, it's getting there. But mm. there's a lot of arrogant men out there who just want to have it all and don't want to give them, you know any power or any sense of power at least mm. it's yeah and here we go I mean this is a film that basically tells you exactly how it is yeah in so many ways it's possible this happens again it's a film of like many levels you know it's a film of how women are treated in Hollywood how hard it actually is to be a yes. famous actress yeah it, I think it 
delves into mental health issues quite... It's definitely a cautionary tale. It's not a (laughs) how-to. No, definitely not. (laughs) This is not something that I would take to my drama class and say, Kids! The H to Z guide to making it in Hollywood. Here we go, take notes, guys! Yeah. Never, to... never suck cock on the first meeting with the producer. Always ring up. Reject them us. first and then crawl back. They want it so much more then. Yes, they'll know that you're serious about the role. <laughs> <laughs> never jump. Never jump in with both feet. Think yeah. about it first. Quit your job and then grovel for your job back <laughs> before you actually slap your manager around the face. <laughs> That's the way it's done, okay? Uh, again, her <laughs> decline is just incredible the the pacing of this movie is quite extraordinary because you you the first act you're with her on her projecting herself into the world of of the hollywood audition mm. the second act is purely about the the what what changes from that encounter and the um, and the, the the point of no return of course is when she actually does have sex and yeah. then she starts the deterioration which is is slow and gradual yeah there's a lot of um yeah, her body, a, her body image changes as like, well. As, as a, becomes, a mental well-being breaks down, her body starts to break down, doesn't it? But it starts to become extremely, uh, from when she was quite modest in the beginning of the movie about her body and about uh, about her body image, she just suddenly seems to just lurch as if her body is no longer hers or in her control. Mm. And it's, yeah, it's... She's incredible in it, she really is. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in her deterioration that was a surprise, and I think it's that that Act Three um, change where she has that confrontation mm. with, I mean, with the, with a girl. Yeah, <laughs> and um, there seems to be a big hunter's knife available <laughs> <laughs> just when you need it the most. And and I did write. This is what I wrote. Says, why do they have such vicious knives, hunting knives, in a domestic kitchen? If she had a tomato knife, they would have, they wouldn't have been a problem. They would have just been laughing about it. A plaster would have been put over, and they should have. No, you know, I've just felt a little bit shitty, a bit satanic. That's all. It's a bit sadist. <laughs> so I'm sorry, it was a bitch. You know, things would have been fine if it was a tomato knife. Yeah. Fl- but no, no, no. It had to be the big gushing knife that they used to chop onions with. I I, I blame uh, Paul Hogan. I blame Paul Hogan. That's not a knife. Yeah, because yeah. now that's the benchmark of what all knives are measured against. Literally, it's in the bench. Yeah, it's it's that's it's there to be grabbed. Okay, there's a couple of lines. You are a waitress, and I live in a van. That was the guy who lives in the van, who's yeah. the director. Yeah, the, uh, the he's he's our kind of director, really. This is the, he's working on our level. <laughs> just to get just films women swimming in a pool. <laughs> when did we do that? I don't know. But we, are we going? Are, are we above that, or are we going? Are we sliding towards that? Because no, of, I uh, think we're, um, <laughs> we're, we're we're slightly different. But I mean, he says he says you're a waitress and I live in a van. So what? These thing, uh, those things aren't exclusive about stopping us doing from what about doing what we want to do. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're a waitress or it doesn't matter if you're not a waitress. It doesn't matter if you work at home if you're if you're a father if you're a work at home dad. It doesn't matter if you work in Sainsbury's. Other supermarkets are available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You got in there before me. I did. I was waiting for you to say it. Yeah, but no, that it's true. That is a good thing because yeah. uh, I think uh, you know you do whatever you it takes to get where you want to go. Oh. So if that means working for minimum wage at a awful cinema, then but uh, yeah, in a means other to, cinema chains that are available. Yeah, <laughs> other cinema. They are great chain that. Oh, that's it. Imagine that. Let's go down to other cinema. Which one? Other cinema. What, which one are you on about? No, other cinema. Which other cinema? The other fil- cinema. The, fi- the film house that is also on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you're in that other cinema, there's like lights and an alien abduction. Yay. And makes you kill Actually, people. Did, I, did I tell you about my fantastic idea for a restaurant? No, I love this idea. This is my idea. Like people always say that they want to go to a, a theme restaurant. Like um, in, in Fargo, they have the alien um, restaurant where you go in, and it's basically just filled with alien memorabilia, and it's it's really doesn't go where you expected it. Right. Okay. But I imagine this, right? Okay, 
the, this is this is your ultimate alien abduction um, restaurant experience. You have to make a reservation via phone. Okay. They call you back and tell you that um, you do not have a time or a place or a table. We will come and get you. Right. Okay. So you 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 do your reservation. How many people are we abducting today? Okay. Okay. So, okay. And, and you literally, you literally do not know when you're gonna have to go visit this restaurant because it happens at any time, day or night. You will be abducted. You'll be simply forget where you are. You'll you'll actually be bundled into a van with your other other paying tenants, and you'll be taken to a restaurant where you'll be lying on 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 tables, <laughs> what the fuck? and you will be fed a course of of a starter, main course, and dessert. Intraveniously uh, through feeding tubes, where you'll be stared at by um, um, people dressed up in alien costumes. You will then be asked. You ask for the bill. You swipe your card, and then you'll go along the end corridor, and then to which you'll be stripped naked and and thrown out of your va- out of the van, only to come to and realize that you you don't know where you are, and you have to find your way home. That to me is is a perfect alien supernatural restaurant experience. I can't see it taken off. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the amazing? Only, the, only th- the only drawback I can find with that is if you're going to get abducted any time, <laughs> you might have eaten beforehand and then they take you. You won't be hung. Oh, they're going to just force feed you anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all right. That's okay. If you vomit, it's and then, fine. Yeah, and then they'll even implant in you. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, it's like a voucher score system. The more times you go, the more implants you, you, you get. If you get six implants, I can't breathe now. I've just got that many chips up my nose. <laughs> and after the sixth visit, you get a free. <laughs> you get a free anal probe. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, and if you visit ten times, you get a free book deal and a, and a chance to do a documentary on PBS yeah. about that is talking about your alien abduction experience. Oh dear. <sighs> okay, back to Starry Eyes. <laughs> right, so, yeah. so the first death. We, 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 this, this poor girl, she gets slashed in the face. She does. And it goes on for eight. It's a long scene. She's standing there holding her face in shock for a long time. Yeah. Uh, if you remember correctly, the camera doesn't shy away from much. No, it doesn't really. Sure. Well, it's it's when she then, she then leaves the room. Yeah. She finds the boyfriend who's lying in bed waiting for the other girl to come back. And there's a, there's a definite Michael Myers moment going on there. Yeah. When she grabs the thing. It does and, turn full on slasher, and film. all of us, yeah, and all of a sudden, yeah, as soon as I mean the slash on the face, you thought, "Wow, that was a shock." You weren't yeah. expecting that. You do not expect the blunt instrument to be lifted above, to then start coming down, yeah, and down and down, and you see this face being Pummeled. pulverized yeah. to to uh, to something unrecognizable that. It's, it's like it's like sort of what happened in Pan's Labyrinth, taken to the next level. That's exactly what I wrote. It's oh the, bloody it's, hell! Yeah, it's, it's the face cave in with the gun handle. Yeah. in Pan's Labyrinth, taken to the next level. Yeah, I mean that shocked me in Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah. It's one of the f- things in the that I have to not look at. Well, there's to say, have you ever seen Irreversible with Monica Bellucci? No. That's um, a very that's a very hard film to watch. But there's yeah. a part in that where you go they go into this gay club and it's more sadomasochism. Sadist masochism. A sadist club and everyone's doing all manner of horrible things to you. And he finds this guy and just starts pummeling his face and the camera doesn't shy away. His face just starts collapsing and stuff as he keeps going. It's, it's, it's not nice. It's brutal. And, and in, <laughs> in, in any other film, I would have shied away. But I actually just... Because you're with her. You're still with her. You still don't know why you're with her, yeah. Because you don't know why she, you know, even though you don't know why she went to that audition. But I'm sorry, but you, as a person watching this film, you're still with her, and I actually didn't shy away. And because you've seen what she's been through, she's she's lost it, you know. And you sort of you feel sorry for her because of everything that she's been through and but she's, how she's been used by everyone. She's destroying the things that stopped her, yeah, and that forced her to do this. Just before this, is that I seem to remember <coughs> coming out the ground. No, that's later on. Oh, that's sorry, sorry. That's the rebirth. That's the, that's rebirth. the rebirth. That's the, the the resurrection. The after the, the after her killing spree, she gets taken away by the uh, people who who bought a lot of flashlights. Uh, oh, by the way, 
um, if if you want to know who the sa the Satanists are, track back to any bolt quarters of battery operated fluorescent tubing. Oh, okay. And then you'll be able to know exactly yeah. who these people are because they all seem to have quite a good bulk order going on there with, um, <laughs> of, of flashlights. But anyway, yeah, the, the, there's a face bludgeon and then she goes back to the girl in the kitchen yeah, who is just about to get up and get her life back to normal. <laughs> back to, go back to... <laughs> she got a knitting kit out. She wants to sort her face out. She's just got to come to terms with the fact that, okay, I've got to stitch my face up. Well, nothing else could be worse now. I mean, this is the worst I'm, it's going to be. Yeah. She just comes running in, hunter's knife. <laughs> Straight at this, I spat on you. And she just bludgeons her to death. And then, well, she's not dead because she puts her on the floor. She, I think she... she leaves her for a little bit longer and then she goes back and puts the bag over her head until she really is dead at least she's consistent but she goes but she keeps on coming back I mean I've never, I've never seen in a horror film a slasher film no. where they they hurt somebody go away come back hurt them hurt them really bad go, go back away. and then just come back and go okay bag no it's never been done that way no not to my knowledge no, no. so there you yeah, go yeah well so she's she's a hot psycho now. She's still hot. She's a psycho. She's a hot psycho. <laughs> the best kind of she's psycho. Like, yeah. She's got more kill and spill than Michael Myers, but she's still hot. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay, right? Yep. <laughs> so uh, I take it she never made it in Hollywood after all then. I... <laughs> Imagine after all that when she has a rebirth and stuff. I thought, I'll go back and give it another shot. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. that bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she probably she makes it in, in a in, in the new series of the Odd Couple with Matthew Perry as a guest star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nobody need know. <laughs> One thing they didn't explore though. Well, what all would have been how famous she would have become for losing it and murdering all these people. So she would have achieved some sort of no notoriety. notoriety because yes. of that. But isn't that the the Mickey and Mallory Knox kind of? It is. I don't. They, they didn't need to do it. Yeah, but you know it, what I mean. They so could have. They could have. Yeah. It's definitely a different message, but it's definitely a message that is worth exploring because it, eventually all these murders would have been, mm. you know, directed straight to her. Yeah, and it, and it wouldn't have been like, you know, um, waitress mm. murders. It would have been wannabe actress. Yeah, murders all of all her friends and. Yeah. Um, and the jealous rage. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That would have been. Yeah. And then, and then she, she, she kills our, our lovely, uh, man in a van. She does. Um, and to which all of the observers from the satanic cult, um, gather around her, take her off. And, um, they bury her. She comes out, bold. Um, she has that look of, um, um, in Star Trek 1 the motion picture she looks like Alia is it Alia? no Ilea 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 yeah she has that look mm. and um, skull cap and all and uh, she goes back and she murders her best friend yeah and then she sits in front of a mirror puts on her pentagon and uh, her, pe her pentagon pentagon pentagram pentagram she puts on her pentagram and um she suddenly is the idol that she always wanted to be. That's before they cart her off in the van and put her into a mental asylum and uh, yeah, and do what you said she did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because we don't see the aftermath, do we? we don't, there is no, there's no consequence for her. Mm. There's no consequence. For her. Um, she's a victim to the end. Yeah. And um, well, it's just an incredible, it's an astonishing piece of work. Yeah, but so artistically done. Yeah, and I think that's probably why I, I, I I've been so hard on <laughs> I that word honeymoon. Again, on honeymoon because yeah, I, th I think once you've tasted this, you don't go to uh, microwave pudding again. Mm. So this is the the sirloin. This is the sirloin steak of horror movies. Yeah. It's really, I mean, this is Babadook. I mean, she does a, a, a performance. It's that level, yeah. Uh, level. I mean, even though Babadook had no gruesomeness, it had no slasher. It had, no, it, it was, well, that didn't. Need, it was all uh, psychological. Yeah. But yeah, I'm. I rate this one higher, definitely, uh, as a surprising, you know, good recommendation. You're always welcome. 
Now, the other film, that, I mean, the, the one running theme is that a lot of things happen down below with these women. And, uh, yes. It, it kind of made me want to kind of take, take, take an, uh, suddenly take an, an interest, interest in vaginas. <laughs> with teeth. And the vagina dentata, which is something that we actually touched upon. <laughs> Excuse the expression. It's something that we explored. No, okay. Uh, in gynecology. Sometimes something um, we looked at, no. It's, uh, it's something, something we felt, no. It's something, something we could that smell, we, no. It's something that we discussed. <gasps> Safe. In uh, contextual studies and media right. studies. And we, we talked about the whole thing about how women are perceived in film and how... There's this the fear of uh, of um, castration for a man mm. um, because we believe that the uh, the vagina is what is a, as a thing that has teeth the vagina then data, it's critters it's langoliers it's all of those things that yeah. the vagina with teeth is is prevalent in in society everywhere mm. um, from pencil cases with zips uh, to um, you know to um, it could be a DVD case you open DVD and put the DVD in the DVD case yeah that's mean, where it belongs exactly. And it's a it's a bizarre thing mm. that the film Teeth actually just directly addresses the vagina dentata head on. <laughs> Excuse the expression, <laughs> or head off, depending yeah. on, on how far you go with that. But um, it is a it's it's something that's not explored very often. And I think that with the film Teeth, they they just didn't want it. They, they blatant. Took, yeah, yeah. They thought, well, nobody's done this this you know up to the point before so let's really just drum it home let's make it so that nobody else can really play with it or <laughs> touch it or get their fingers bitten off by it <laughs> yeah all right what can i do for you miss is this your first time are you sexually active no i just want to be checked out okay then what do you put in here it's too late. There is something inside of me. And it's, um, from what I've seen, I haven't seen the whole film. Um, I watched some of it. It's very on the nose. Again, yeah, it's all surface. Yeah, which is okay. I mean, there's some good performances. There is. There's some interesting um, and it's all about design. Yeah, and it's all about how women can be treated. But also how That's men can be affected by that. I mean, yeah. how the guy turns into a grunge, hate, woman-hating, dog-loving, um, uh, hate music kind of a guy just because of that experience of the show me yours and I show you mine kind of uh, exp and, and having his finger bitten off by the vagina mm. um, but it, yeah. it's, it's always interesting to explore like men and women yes. relationships you know like because men tend to be very kind of um, violent and like in, in, it Pos starts in the possessive, playground. Possessive well, about. Yeah, well, yeah. I think it starts in the playground where um, if one boy's got a problem with another boy, they'll have a fight about it. It's sorted. Yeah. But women, I think, can be more evil because where the guys will just have a fight and then it's over and done with. Women go right. We won't speak to her. We will passive aggressive. Yeah, it's, it's we'll very... ignore her. She'll not know why, but we're not going. We'll ignore her because yeah. she's not. She's wearing the wrong kind of shoes. Yeah, she's not a part of our our vision. Mm for life we don't yeah. really I don't think men are really psychologically as I don't know what I'm trying to say that we're, we're just sh shallow penis grabbing remote control hogging um, <sighs> no I, I think I know what you're saying is that, yeah. that, is that I'm not it, saying we're shallow it, at it, all. It, I think it's more that we could actually get by with just that and not have anything at all if we didn't have ambition and passion or um, vision or if we didn't have imagination if we didn't have the drive that, yeah. that makes us do things in life like the, the comedian you know, Dylan Moran has a really good line where he says like men are the more uh, more romantic than women are yeah because a man will go I, I've met this girl and I, I need to be with her yeah I'm I'm fucked I mean I've got I've, I've got this great job I've got an apartment it means nothing if I can't be with her she's everything she's amazing she's beautiful intelligent I just I need to be with her and that's yes. how women feel about shoes <laughs> you know that's the gag well, that's it. it's kind yeah. of got a point though you know it is yeah and the only reason why we have other things is because we're sentient and we have we have the ability to create 
thought and ambition, mm. drive, determination, fear is a big thing in our life that that pushes us to do things and to to not focus on just having a penis for once in our life. Yeah, that's why we are architects and build big skyscrapers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Look like a penis. I try to ignore my penis and pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> just so you can be different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what you said about um, people <laughs> always, you know, if everyone gets into, like, Game of Thrones. So yeah. I'm watching Game of Thrones because everyone else is watching it. Yeah. I feel the same way about my penis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ignore it because everyone else talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> In those circles, who's talking about your penis? It's just... <laughs> There's, just a few, there's a lot of people in my head, you know. Ah, just one of them. That's, I mean, that's, that's the one thing that, that we're constantly trying to separate ourselves from the cattle. Mm. Because we're so aware that if we associate ourselves with the masses of, of the world, that we lose our identity out and we, we think that we lose our colour and just become a big blend of grey. Yeah. Um, in, in, a, in a wash with everybody's... The, the mass appeal of what people just do as, as conformists. Mm. We don't conform, therefore we are conforming to the non-conformist regime. So we end up just fulfilling uh, the uh, yeah. a- another spectrum of of conformity. Yeah, which is it pisses me off because I'm 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 aware of that now, and I don't know which way to go. So I go a little bit of conform, a little bit of rebel, and I kind of just sway between the two. I gu- I guess I don't really think about it. Yeah, you don't think no, about it. No, I, I used to. Like uh, back at college, I'd be like, "Well, I'm not listening to the Beatles because everyone listens to the Beatles. I'm not going to listen to the Beatles. I'm going to listen to Beach Boys instead. That's what I'm going to do." And uh, but now I just don't care. If I like it, I like. It. If I don't, I don't. Whatever oh, yeah. it is, there's that. But I, I'm, I'm just conscious of why. You know, when I when I said I don't want to do something that everybody else is doing, I question myself why now. I yeah. feel, well, why is it though? It, 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 and usually it is, the answer is, I just don't want to. Mm. I don't want that. You sort of push against when pe- everyone's trying to tell you to do something. Yes. You've got to do this. You've oh, got to I love do that. that. I love it when people t- try to tell me something because I know I'm definitely not going to do it. Yeah. They're helping me with my decision there. Yeah. So you sh- need to watch Games of Thrones. He said, no, I'm certainly not going to. Yeah, well, I'm it's convinced great. if I watch Game of Thrones, I'm going to really like it. I am, but. Really? Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be, I think it's really good. Hmm. But I'm still not watching it. Yeah, I guess I guess there's that, but I don't know. You don't think you like it? Game I don't. Are you sick I, of, I, you sick I of all to... Middle Earthy type things? Yes, I'm very, very sick of tired of Middle Earthy type things. I think that. Um, Can you, you know... imagine, right, a Hobbit four, right, mm. set in Middle Earth in a cabin in the woods? No. <laughs> Oh, and, and he doesn't leave that cabin no. for a whole four-hour flick. It, there's dragons outside, but all that kind of shit. He's too busy he's, reading. Yeah, he's sat in the cabin, yeah, reading the Book of the Dead. Book of the Dead, yeah. yeah. Oh, we never said out that list. What was your favourite cabin in the woods? Oh, film? my... Well, do you have one? Yeah, oh, Evil Dead, all the way. Evil Dead, all the way. Yeah. I love the film Cabin in the Woods, because it's yeah. just great. Um, but yeah, Evil Dead is one of my favourite films. Yeah, and I've got my least favourite film in there, which is Cabin Fever. Oh, yeah. Dude. Can't stand that film. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and Dreamcatcher is, is not in that list, but Dreamcatcher is also set in a, a cabin. cabin in the woods, yeah. I didn't but, mind um, that film. Everyone was against it, but I didn't mind it. I think I have to say that, that my favourite from that list... Uh, it's so difficult to just pick a favourite. Mm-hmm. Um the the one thing that that I think Friday the Thirteenth really I think but then I'm you know I, I I I like I say I'm not a big fan of the Cabin in the Woods genre right so I I find it hard to kind of find something that I'm really really okay Communion that they were in a cabin in a woods yeah and then it goes to the city and carries on up and yeah there. yeah which is, I'm I that. like that film. Yeah, that's a good film because it takes it away. It should, we talk, should we do a podcast on alien abduction films? I think we should. Yeah. I think we should because there's plenty of them out there. Yeah. And there's not this one because I don't kind of see this as an alien abduction film. I see this as a psychological uh, problem between husband and wife mm. with, a, with a backdrop of alien abduction. Yeah, that's, yeah. Absolutely. I think I think when you've got it in the foreground, it's a completely different entity altogether. Right. So we've not really talked about teeth, but I don't think we need to. 
I think it is what it is. I mean, it it's is. a film it's, that is it's about a serviceable film, you know. It's about a contextual study subject that yeah. needs some sort of uh, filmic fictional um, delivery system okay. to uh, to teach the uh, the theory and the ideas yeah. the ideals behind it and that and chastity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Honeymoon yeah. is a, a serviceable film, but nothing special. I'd have to say yes. And Starry Eyes is a multi-layered film, which is phenomenal, incredible achievement. Yeah, and, and I'm surprised, really surprised that that um, that it hasn't surfaced, mm. and it's been very quiet that it's not getting the distribution that it deserves. It's not as if all the reviews have been very favourable towards it. Mm. You know, I think it, it did well at all, like, horror awards. But it just... And stuff, but. It makes me believe that independent films are where it's happening. And I think we have to work hard, just like we used to when before the internet came about, when we didn't even know what mainstream films were coming out unless we actually went into the Odeon mm. and picked up a leaflet. <laughs> we wouldn't know what was going on. All the I cinemas are available. They... <laughs> <laughs> we we have to do the same now about independent films because they don't always have the. Uh, In some respects, I feel it's yeah. it's kind of our duty to find these films and share them and share them about. Yeah, because exactly. that was just me being on. Uh, have you ever been on bloodydisgusting.com? No, uh, no. Uh, it's just about horror mm. genres and games and stuff. It's really worth it. Like yeah, it. yeah. And I always go in the review section to find new films, and it was there, Starry Eyes, and it was giving it lots of good reviews. I thought I need to find it. So we're telling you right now, go find it, yeah. go watch it, and um, but uh, we might want to say that at the beginning of the podcast because we just kind of ruined it for them. Okay. Okay. So let's go back in time to the beginning of the podcast. Your cat scratching her face against the glass of the table. That's okay. Okay. She loves it. So, Andy, um, if you remember at the end of this podcast, uh, we said that we need to go back and just let everybody know that uh, you need to remember that there's spoilers in this episode. Yes. Spoilers mean ruining the film. Yeah. So we're telling you now, go watch Starry Eyes before you listen to this podcast. And then, once you've listened to this podcast, go back and watch it again. And then just keep watching it. And share share it, share it, and the podcast as well. Yeah. But remember, that's not how to make it in Hollywood. That's that's the wrong way to go about it's a it. cautionary tale. It's not a how-to. Okay. okay. Thank you. Let's start the podcast. Okay. Again. <laughs> you know, I, I want to take this opportunity to, to let the people know how they can contact our friends at Frame by Frame. They do that podcast You thing. know the two guys, yeah. They do the podcast, okay? So how... They're, they're nice. They're, they're like a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Exactly. And so if you want to, to, to do the communicating thing, you know, the social networking uh, thing... Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can tweet those guys tweet? at Frame by Frame 78. If you'd like to go to their website, that will be www roastedportions.com hey, hey, hey. You don't need to do the www. It's implied that it's going to be the World Wide Web. But people need to know that. Okay, just go to roastedportions.com, okay? You go down on the right-hand side. You've got the social connection. You can you can talk to the people who do the show. You can even talk to uh, uh, the people who made that movie, you know, CACO3. Who'd want to talk to those mooks? I don't know. They made a pretty interesting movie, right? Yeah. It was in black and white. Yeah, black and white. I yeah, like you know, that. We like black and white because, and there was also some trees in that movie too. Oh, trees! It's like like being in a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Other connections, you can really get to know these people on YouTube as well. And if you want to comment on their on their podcast, I urge you to do that. Okay. Yeah, I think it is a, a proper, really nice thing if people want to start contacting these Subscribe guys. Subscribe to them and and, and com comment. I mean, it's just just polite, you know. Also, you can email them at framebyframe78 at gmail dot com. That's it. I think that's everything wrapped up. So, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and plant a tree somewhere. Okay, you go plant some trees. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go, go plant a tree. I'm gonna go tweet. You tweet. I'll plant a tree. It's us, we're out of here.